Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I take your questions that I've been given on social media and I go into a little bit more depth in answering them. Today's questions are all about embroidery and if you want to put a question to us and you want it answered like this, please use hashtag Printer's Corner in your question in one of the comments on any of our videos and I'll pick that up for a future episode. Let's jump straight into our first question. It's from Silk Screens and they said, is that a magnetic hoop? If so, how do you like it? It was a magnetic hoop. It's one of these ones and they're referring to how we're hooping all of our different garments. So in this particular video that we were showing, we were doing a big fluffy hoodie on Instagram and sometimes it's tricky to do different garment types. So these have been a real godsend to us because we didn't come into it very experienced in embroidery, but embroidery is a really good complementary service to screen printing to offer to clients. So we just got the easiest things to work with because we found the hoops that you get traditionally, you have to force them in with your hands and it's quite difficult. It's a bit of a skill to get the embroidery level on like a left chest piece of writing or something. So we just went ahead, invested in the Mighty Hoops quite quickly. We also went ahead and got the jigs, which are called the Hoop Masters. And that's where you actually dress a hoodie and then you can attach the hoop and put it in exactly the same place on a whole edition of hoodies that you're, print, that you're embroidering. So these are really, really cool. You have, you have to apply hardly any pressure at all for when you're actually embroidering and hooping garments. And I'm gonna just show you how strong they are. That would be underneath the bottom of the garment. Then you'd have some backing and then it just clamps on there really, really quickly. And it hasn't got a chance to move or skew or anything like that. And it can hold really heavy garments when it's on the embroidery machine. That means that you're not getting garments like pop out halfway through an embroidery and you've ruined it. I would massively suggest, and I don't really know how people do without magnetic hoops. They're a really great investment and we actually went ahead and got like a few more as soon as we could. So yes, they are. Our second question is regarding this massive embroidery that we did. And we did an Instagram post about it. It's this huge dropped ice cream kind of design that M made for Blind Maggot, which is our own brand. And we just went to town on it, made it the biggest that we possibly could on the hoodies. And it got lots of comments and questions. And um, yeah, it's just something that we messed around with that I had in my head for a while. And the question was from at apparel underscore studio. And they asked, wow, must have been a few hundred thousand stitches. How long is that taking? I actually looked it up and on the little spec sheets that we get, and it was 85,827 stitches, which is just enormous. And it took, I estimate, around two hours a hoodie to complete one hoodie, which was two enormous of our biggest hooped embroidery sections. So one at the top, one at the bottom. And then we had a left chest and I put a neck label in every time, which was a little ultra color heat transfer. So it took about two hours a hoodie. That is not something that I would typically offer a commercial customer because it's just way over the top and it would take me days to complete, especially because I only have one big embroidery machine. It was a little passion project that we had on the side and we were able to just leave the embroidery running in the background while we did our other things. So it didn't really get in the way and it was just a bit of fun. They also sold really well, which is why I haven't got one here with me, but I've got some videos to show you as well about like how it actually came out in real life. And the only way to see one now is to come to Newbury because that's where they mainly live because we sold them on our market store. I would definitely just say, just have a little play, experiment in your own time, see how long these enormous designs can take and see what you can offer your customers from what you learn just messing around. Our final question is from Jerry Buckley and they've asked, do you mind me asking how many sheets of backing you were using stitching out those items? I love your videos, thanks. Cheers, Jerry. This question is referring to us embroidering beanies and hoodies. 
on a YouTube video and it was about conventional hoops or mighty hoops for embroidery. I think it's quite a good YouTube video. It gives like a general overview of the embroidery process that we typically do in our studio. We go for one of two types of backing. The main backing that we go for, and we have the biggest supply for, and I get through the most, is tearaway. We've gone through a few different weights and qualities of tearaway, and we found that this one, which is 75 grams, is heavy enough to just use two sheets of, so that you are not having to use four sheets of the lighter, crappier quality backing. And I think that actually is a better economy over the long run because we're using less sheets, even though each sheet is more expensive. I think in the long run, it's, it's actually worked out really well for us. And we've gone for the tear away because we're using nice high quality garments and we want a finish that doesn't look all like bulky when the person's actually wearing it. And we definitely don't want embroidery backing to be like, holding the embroidery up and you'd be able to see it through the garment. So we opt for tear away because it gives a nice clean finish on the back and you can literally just like rip it with your hands really quickly sometimes to finish the garment and finish the embroidery job. For speed and all that type of thing, this is the one we go for. One other thing to think about is you can get backing on these huge rolls and then you have to cut them down to size. So we've opted for 20 by 20 centimeter backing sheets pre-cut in our preferred 75 gram weight. And that is because this is the embroidery hoop that we use typically and it's for, great for you know, beanies and left chests and the majority of our embroidery. And that fits just like that over the top it, well, it's in between there. And that just means that we're getting the minimal amount of waste, but we're also able to quickly hoop up uh, and not miss the embroidery backing when we're doing it. So I would say 75 gram, 20 by 20 centimeter, nice high quality backing on a really good organic cotton garment, and you're gonna get the best embroidery possible for that. The other backing that we do have in the studio, but I don't tend to use anymore, is the cutaway. And it's, it's still a very nice structured embroidery backing. And this is the 80 gram sheet. And we typically use two sheets again of that one because it's quite high it's quite, quite thick and structured. It's gonna hold the garment in place well for embroidery, but we just don't tend to go for it. The reason we don't go for it is because when you're finishing the garment, and by that I mean removing the excess backing, you actually have to use a pair of scissors to cut away. And I have gone through a, like a, a t-shirt once and I just ripped a hole right through the t-shirt with the, with the scissors. So if I'm trying to avoid making errors myself, I'd go for the tearaway uh, instead of the cutaway. Let me know in the comments though, if you go for cutaway, if you don't use those, those hoops, or if you, if you think we could improve our embroidery in any way, let me know in the comments. Uh, Cause I'd really like to know if people opt for this instead. To round up this week's printer's corner, the main question was how many sheets of backing do you use for embroidery? And I always start with two sheets of either and go up or down as needed. If you, if you find that you don't need that many, just uh, take one out or add one in. If you want any of your questions answered, don't forget to use hashtag printers corner in your questions on social media and check in next week for our fresh episode.